Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is uh, Arif Vareni here. I am the Parliamentary Secretary to uh, Minister Mary Ng, and I wanted to welcome you to today's uh, important event. Uh, today, uh, we, I wanted to first start by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you in Toronto, which is situated on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, the Anishinaabeg, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit. Toronto is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis people. As I mentioned at the outset, I'm the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Trade, Export Promotion, Small Business and Economic Development. I'm also the Member of Parliament for Parkdale High Park in Toronto, a riding that is replete, I'm proud to say, with many strong women entrepreneurs, some of whom Minister Mary Ng has had the pleasure to meet and interact with over the years. And I'm also a proud Muslim Canadian who settled in Canada as a refugee in 1972, when Idi Amin forced thousands of South Asians from our home in Uganda. I mention this because to say that I know firsthand what occurs when diversity, inclusion, and equality are not valued and are not protected. That's why today I'm very honored to join in this important announcement in support of gender equality and women's part participation in the Canadian economy. When it comes to women's economic empowerment, the government is tackling this important issue from several fronts. We are applying things like a gender-based analysis to inform all of our policies. We are boosting the Canada Child Benefit and legislating things like pay equity. We have also, as will be well known, invested $30 billion to make a Canada-wide early learning and child care system a reality in this country. We've also launched the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy, which is the focus of today's announcement. For ce qui est de l'autonomisation économique des femmes, le gouvernement aborde cet enjeu important, surtout les angles possibles. Nous utilisons les données produites par l'analyse comparative entre les sexes pour nous aider à orienter nos politiques. Nous avons bonifié l'allocation canadienne pour les enfants et nous légiférons sur l'équité salariale. Nous avons également investi 30 milliards de dollars pour bâtir un système pan-canadien d'apprentissage et de garde d'enfants. Nous avons lancé la stratégie pour que les femmes en entrepreneuriat qui fait l'objet de l'annonce aujourd'hui. A driving force behind this $6 billion initiative is a woman who, from day one, has made it her priority to improve the lives of Canadian women. She is a woman whom I have known for a decade, long before she ever sought elected office. And what I can tell you about this woman is that she has 20 years of experience in education, in women's leadership, job creation, and entrepreneurship. The golden slogan when I met her was that Mary makes things happen. She is a devoted community leader who has always believed in the power of public service. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone, please join me in welcoming Canada's Minister of International Trade, Export Promotion, Small Business and Economic Development, the Honourable Mary Ng. Over to you, Mary. Thank you so much, uh, RF, uh, for those very kind words and uh, merci, Arif, pour ces mots généraux. And I'm really thrilled that uh, Marcy Ian is also joining us, my good friend and colleague and our Minister for Women and Gender Equality of youth and Youth. And it's terrific to have her with us today to make this important announcement. I also wanna recognize two incredible women leaders who are also here with us today. J'aimerais également souligner le leadership de deux femmes qui se joignent à nous aujourd'hui. Christine Nakamura from the Asia Pacific Foundation, a national ecosystem partner, and Alita Burke, COO and co-founder of Grocers, an entrepreneur who has been supported by our government's ecosystem. And uh, before I begin, let me also acknowledge that I am speaking to you from the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ishnabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa and the Wendat peoples, and for those of us who are settlers or even immigrants to Canada, it's important to recognize that Indigenous peoples have always been here and that we all have a role to play in reconciliation. And with the Omicron variant leading to lockdowns across the country, my heart goes out to all of our small business owners and to all of the entrepreneurs. You've shown incredible resilience throughout this pandemic and our government will continue to have your backs. Now, we know, unfortunately, that the pandemic has also disproportionately impacted underrepresented groups, especially women entrepreneurs and business owners. We recognize that well before this pandemic though, they have faced systemic barriers to success. Our government knows that investing in the success of women entrepreneurs isn't just the right thing to do, it's the smartest thing we can do for a strong and inclusive economy. 
by ensuring the full and equal participation of women, we know that we can add up to $150 billion to the Canadian economy. And uh, as the International Trade Minister, I'd be remiss to say that if the world follows suit, that's $12 trillion to the global economy. In Canada, only 16% of Canadian small and medium-sized businesses are owned for women, owned by women. And uh, that is why our government took action. And this is why it has been a top priority of mine and that of our government to change this. A key component of this strategy is the ecosystem fund and our many national and economic, rather our many national and regional service provider partners across the country. The government of Canada has been working with partners like the Asia Pacific Foundation, who has been instrumental in organizing women-focused international trade missions. We've worked with the Native Women's Association of Canada to develop an incubator program for Indigenous women entrepreneurs. We've worked with CEO to help women entrepreneurs access non-traditional financing, along with customized training. Through these ecosystem partners and many, many others that make up now a network across Canada, Women entrepreneurs across the country receive business training, mentorship, digital skills, access to business network, financial literacy, and many more other services to help their businesses succeed. The Ecosystem Fund now has funded 52 projects across the country, and they have done good work. They, the Ecosystem Partners, have supported over 5,000 women start new businesses and over 7,000 women grow their existing businesses over these last two years. Now, keeping up with this momentum, I'm thrilled to share today that we're launching a new call for proposals under the Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy Ecosystem Fund. Our most recent budget provided a further $25 million investment to empower and to support more women entrepreneurs, to ensure that we build an inclusive economy. We're going to be looking for a new ecosystem partners that will focus on removing systemic barriers and create more equal access to the resources that are intersectionally diverse and underserved women in the business will need to succeed. Recognizing the dynamism of Canadian entrepreneurs and business owners, we're going to focus on organizations and projects that will address systemic barriers and gaps for diverse underserved women with intersecting identities. To organizations who are committed to advancing gender equality and empowering women entrepreneurs. I know there are many of you out there. I want to personally invite you to submit a proposal so that you could be considered as an ecosystem partner. And at the end of the day, ensuring the full and equal participation of women is simply good economics. I can't think of a better time to keep doing this work, particularly now as we are all fighting to finish, finish the fight against COVID-19 and that we help our businesses get on that road to economic recovery. You heard me say earlier, the smart economics, simply by adding women to our economy, can add up to $150 billion to the Canadian economy. And if the world follows suit, a further $12 trillion to the global economy, and uh, as early as by 2030. So this is very worthwhile doing. Empowering women in Canada's economy has been a priority for our government. It's been a priority for me personally since day one, and we are committed because we know that a diverse and inclusive economy is a competitive and a successful one because it's the right thing to do as well. Et parce que c'est la bonne chose à faire. Thank you so much. Merci. Thank you so much, Minister Ng, for those really compelling words. And uh, I, I think you hit, uh, you, you captured it exactly when we were talking about COVID-19 and sort of the idea about building back Building back better and more inclusively starts with women entrepreneurs. So thank you for your leadership role in projects such as this and for this important call for proposals. Now, it's my pleasure to turn to the person that you identified, our colleague, uh, the Minister for Women and Gender Equality and Youth, Marcy Ian, who is joining us today, and we're delighted to have her. Marcy is a very dedicated community leader and a passionate advocate for vulnerable communities in the city, in this country, and literally around the planet. Prior to being elected to the House of Commons, she had an award-winning career in journalism and television that spanned three decades. You may have seen her, as I did with my son, over the holidays when we were watching a documentary about Donovan Bailey, and there was Marcy Ian's face on the screen right in front of us doing what she does best. She is a proud Black Canadian and a staunch advocate in the fight against racism and the fight for equality. I wanted to ask you to please join me in welcoming the Honourable Marcy Ian. Over to you, Minister Ian. 
Uh, Parliamentary Secretary Varani, thank you so much, and Minister Ng for your inspiring words and, and your words of empathy and support that are really, really needed right now. This is excellent, excellent leadership. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I am joining you from my home in Toronto on the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Métis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. So as Minister for Women and Gender, equality and youth, I am thrilled to be a part of today's announcement. I, I say it's important because so many studies have shown us that women entrepreneurs are, are likely to lead businesses that are underfinanced, um, businesses that are smaller and in low growth sectors. En fait, ces entreprises ne uh, reçoivent uh, qu'environ 4% du financement capital de risque au Canada, ce qui rend le démarrage ou la création d'une entreprise extrêmement difficile. We also should recognize that racialized women and those from equity-seeking communities face intersectional barriers that directly directly impact their success. These barriers aren't always the, the tangible dollars and cents that we can clearly see, but they are rooted in long-standing systemic issues. So to go ahead and deconstruct these barriers, our government took action, real action, and contributed $100 million since 2018, and today an additional $25 million. Ce financement aura un impact direct en offrant aux femmes en meilleur accès à des possibilités de mentorat, de réseautage et de développement des compétences. Et comme la ministre Ng l'a dit plus tôt, nous pourrions augmenter le PIB du Canada de 150 milliards de dollars simplement en augmentant la participation des femmes au marché du travail. Aside uh, from the very clear economic benefits of supporting women entrepreneurs, we all know that this pandemic has exposed pre-existing inequalities, inequalities that were there and that have been laid bare for us now, continues to have an impact on women and, and that want to start or want to grow their businesses. So I'd like to take a moment to celebrate a really resilient and extraordinary business in my riding of Toronto Centre. It is called the Blooming Flower Bar. Uh, it's owned by Angie and Jazz Shukla. So Jazz is Angie's daughter, a mother-daughter business. In Cabbage Town, neighbours have dubbed their store their happy place. They say it's their go-to for beautiful flower arrangements. It is amazing. And I have to mention Angie and Jazz's business because it is a superb example of two generations, a mother and daughter, running this amazing business. And they're just one example of the hardworking women right across this country. And, and one moment to just recognize and understand that when our daughters and our nieces see that running their own business is within the realm of possibility, it is absolutely transformative. In closing, I encourage all eligible organizations to apply for this round of ecosystem funding and to take advantage of this great fund. And my pledge to you today is to continue working with my colleagues to build a Canada where women in all their diversity can fully and equally participate in the economy. Parce que lorsque nous investissons dans la réussite des femmes, nous investissons dans la réussite du Canada. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup, merci. C'est super intéressant ce que vous avez mentionné, spécialement concernant les catégories lorsqu'on parle des entrepreneuriats et aussi les, la, euh, les autres obstacles qui, qui, qui font face vis-à-vis, -vis, par exemple, uh, du racisme. And I know you played a significant role in helping to roll out the Black entre Entrepreneurship Strategy. And now we have the Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy. And here we have the two sort of meeting in one place where we're talking about promoting women entrepreneurs who are also diverse women entrepreneurs. So thank you for really highlighting that. Uh, and now I want to turn to some of the guests that we have that uh, Minister Ng mentioned at the very outset. Uh, so my pleasure is next to introduce Christine Nakamura, who is the Vice President of the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada. 
And the Asia Pacific Foundation is a leading organization focused on Canada's relations with Asia and a previous recipient of the Women's Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Fund. So she knows it probably better than all of us here. And the APF has done truly excellent work through the Ecosystem Fund. So we're really eager to hear about uh, Christine's experience with it. So Christine, over to you. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Zing and Ian, Parliamentary Secretary Varani. Good morning, and thank you for including the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada in tonight, today's exciting announcement. As a proud recipient of support from the first tranche of the West Ecosystem Fund, we are honored to be a part of this. And I'm also joining you from Toronto, from the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendell peoples. Following the success of the foundation's 2019 First Canadian Women-Only Business Mission to Japan, which uh, resulted in significant business partnerships, we were awarded a generous contribution from the fund to lead more women-only trade missions to dynamic markets in Asia. The West contribution plus the private sector sponsorship enabled us to successfully lead three missions since Japan, albeit by virtual and hybrid formats because of the pandemic. We led two virtual missions to South Korea in fall 2020 and Australia and New Zealand in December 2021, and a hybrid mission to Taiwan in March 2021. And our next virtual mission is scheduled for India in March 2022. And thanks to Minister Ng, who has supported all of our missions thus far. About uh, 3,200 entrepreneurs and stakeholders have participated in our missions, featuring 80 Canadian women delegates who have been personally and individually supported with funding assistance from the fund, mentoring and important pre-mission training on destination markets. Training includes overviews on political, economic and legal landscape, information on in-market sectors and potential competitors in market, as well as culture and business protocols to ensure an understanding of target markets and appropriate conduct during business to business meetings. Business negotiations are ongoing as relationship building in Asia takes time, but this project has also catalyzed the creation of a powerful ecosystem of women assisting Canadian women in international business titled Can Win for Canadian Women's International Network through connections of networks developed through our missions. Business and thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and advocates of diversity and inclusion are assembling to facilitate gender economic advancement and economic uh, empowerment to business women so that they can engage with growth markets in Asia. So Minister Ng, thank you for investing in women and for enabling efforts to accelerate business scaling by women entrepreneurs, including those of underrepresented BIPOC communities. We are very, very grateful for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christine, for those illuminating words, because I really think it brings to the fore this idea that it's not just about helping a woman start a new business. It's about scaling up that business, growing it and accessing export markets such as in the Asia Pacific. And that's a pretty impressive list of uh, ventures you've already undertaken, uh, some hybrid and some sort of in person. And we're looking forward to a lot more of those visits, including more in person in, in the days to come. Thank you so much for your work and congratulations. And next, I want to turn to uh, our last guest speaker who is a really a rising star of Canadian entrepreneurialism. She is the COO of a hydroponic startup called Grocer, which she founded while she was in university. This award-winning Ottawa firm makes weatherproof containers designed to grow leafy greens and herbs. With a focus on providing sustainable fresh food to communities, she and her partner wowed judges on CBC's Dragon Death, Dragon's Den. And just as that fresh produce wows customers from coast to coast to coast, and I literally mean the third coast, because prior to get going live, we were chatting about the work they're doing in Nunavut of all places. So it is pretty amazing in terms of the work that's being undertaken. And I want you to uh, please join me in welcoming Alita Burke from Grocer. Over to you, Alita. Thank you so much. And thank you all for having me today. As mentioned, um, I was the recipient, myself and my business, of the Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy Fund in 2018 to help grow and scale uh, our business here in Ottawa. Uh, and now more than ever, I think, as we've mentioned on, on this call today, the importance of supporting uh, women-led businesses uh, in these challenging times, uh, the support and opportunities and mentorship 
make a significant difference in being able to support women entrepreneurs in these challenging times. Uh, as we mentioned, only 16% of, of businesses in Canada are owned or, or led by women entrepreneurs. And in light of the challenges uh, that, that are being faced, uh, it's not just uh, with a pandemic, but additional um, requirements for, for, for women uh, that, that are in the home and in other areas uh, that can make uh, now these times really challenging and these funds an important part to be able to help grow and scale their organizations. Uh, to give you an example of, of what that impact can have uh, for us as an organization, uh, with the help of the, the investment that we had back in, the, in 2018, we went from just shy of 10 installations uh, of our equipment across Canada to cresting 40 this year uh, and uh, run by uh, amazing uh, entrepreneurs across Canada from coast to coast to coast. Uh, and in the 2021 year, they were able to grow over a million servings of veggies uh, across Canada, not just in a pandemic, but also with floods uh, in, in BC and wildfires in, in central uh, Canada as well. So it just goes to show the ripple effects that something like this uh, has for women entrepreneurs and women businesses, and that it's not just good for, for entrepreneurs, but it's good for Canada and, and the economy as well. So I really look forward to seeing the women-led biz businesses that are able to be uh, supported through this fund and the opportunities and growth that they have uh, in the years to come. I really look forward to seeing all, that, all that's being uh, accomplished with that. So thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much, Alita. And I will confess, as the sole man on this panel, I'm learning a ton about the amazing work some of these women entrepreneurs are doing. And the work that you're doing, I think, is important because it dovetails with so many different components. It's about supply chains, it's about domestic production. It's also about reducing our carbon footprint when we're doing things locally. And the fact that you've scaled up from uh, literally a fourfold increase from 10 to 40 different installations around the country is a credit to the work you're doing, but it's also great to see federal funding helping to unleash that potential. So congratulations to that work. So thank you, Alita. Thank you, Ministers Ng. Thank you, Minister Ian. And uh, thank you, Christine, for your excellent contributions. Today's announcement is really great news for all of the diverse women entrepreneurs in this country. It's also a great example of how we as a government are trying to work hard to make sure that women entrepreneurs can access support and services that fit their unique needs, context, and experiences. And as Minister Ng put it, I think if, when, we can un, when we can boost that number from 16% of businesses being led by women and make that a much larger figure, we will untap, unleash that economic potential that we all know is there and help us to build a much stronger country and build back better from this pandemic. So thank you again to everyone for joining us today. This concludes the formal portion and I'll turn it over to uh, Alice for uh, some media uh, questions. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much.